Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, praise belongs to Allah. We praise him and we ask him for guidance and forgiveness. And we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whom Allah guides, no one can lead them astray. And whom Allah makes astray, no one can lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no other deity but Allah alone with no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. You who believe, be mindful of God, as is his due. And make sure you devote yourselves to him, to your dying moment. Believers, be mindful of God, speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose. And he will put your deeds right for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys God and his messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters and brothers. I am grateful to Allah that we have um, the ability to share company with one another again on this blessed Friday. And, uh, you know, I'll preface this by saying no matter how much time I give myself to prepare a talk or a reflection, uh, it, it comes down to the last minute and I'm constantly changing where do I want, you know, my thoughts to go. So bear with me today as, as we journey through a topic of, um, and, you know, kind of having some, some understanding of who we are. And that, and that's what I want to talk about today. Um, it's about us. It's about you and me and humans and our nature and the way that we're wired to operate and how that wiring affects how we work in a collective, be it, you know, family, friends, community, or even, you know, wider in a society. And we can go through a plethora of psycholog like psychology books, right, to try and understand why people are the way they are, or as Sister Zainab says it, why people are peopley. Um, but let's instead just use the Quran to gather a broad understanding. And I want to share... Um, Yes, Uncle Al? Sorry, just saw that in the comment. I want to share a screen here. So this is titled The Human Being. Whoops, I hope, you know what, maybe you won't be able to see it if I move my screen. Give me a thumbs up. You can see this screen, this uh, little chart. Can you still see it? Or do you see my, my, okay. All right. So I don't want you to read along with me through my notes, but I want, I'd rather you um, look at the, um, at the chart. Okay. So um, there are uh, a good number of verses that describe sort of these innate flaws that Allah has bestowed on us as humans. And this chart, you'll see um, kind of a trait and then the the verse that you could find this in the Quran where Allah says that says that humans are are very hasty we're hasty we're anxious we are um, weak we are manifestly ungrateful we are surely ungrateful we're just ungrateful we are unjust and ungrateful we can be quarrelsome and argumentative we're miserly we're thankless and we're unjust and ignorant so we can be unjust and ungrateful and unjust and ignorant. Um, I, I can speak a little bit louder, Uncle Al, but I'm pretty darn close to my computer. Do you want to, maybe, is there a way you can turn up your volume a little bit? So these verses describe- Yes, please do it. Uh, turn up the volume a little bit. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Yep. So these verses um, in that chart kind of describe how we humans are innately flawed, right? And some of the characteristics of human nature some of these characteristics um, are of human nature that are that are not nurtured in the light of the no, noble values enshrined in the divine guidance. So um, these are these are. I'll, I'll read out the verse in which these traits are referenced. Um, so to be, you know, we humans are weak and infirm in the control of vain desires, and this is from Surah four, verse twenty-eight, um, Surah An Nisa, and the human being was created weak. We are impatient and anxious. Allah says in Surah 70, verse 19, truly the human being was created fretful. We are hasty. 
the human being was created of haste. That's from Surah 21, verse 37. Also in Surah 17, verse 11, Allah says, and humankind is very hasty. We are unjust. Surely humankind is very unjust and ungrateful. That's from Surah 14, verse 34. Um, Allah mentions that humans are ungrateful in a number of places, including Surah 17, verse 67, Surah 22, verse 66, Surah 43, verse 15, and Surah 100, verse 6. Allah says, and humankind is ever ungrateful. Surely humankind is ever ungrateful. Surely humankind is evidently ever ungrateful. And surely mankind or humankind is ever thankless to their sustainer. Um, Allah says that we are miserly. Allah tells us in Surah 17, verse 100, say, if you possess the very stores of my Lord's bounty, you would hold them back in your fear of spending. Humans are ever grudging. We are contentious and quarrelsome. And certainly we diversified in this, the Quran, every kind of example for humanity. And the human being has been more than anything argumentative. That's Surah 18, verse 54. And lastly, we humans, we lack thought and deliberation. Surely human is very unjust and ignorant, lacking thought and deliberation. Um, that is in verse, uh, sorry, Surah 33, verse 72. So, of course, these descriptives are not all of what, what makes a human human. But rather, Allah is pointing these characteristics out as a means to encourage us to be aware of our tendencies. And so let's dive in just a little bit deeper, um, looking at these traits and the verses um, that I referenced earlier, uh, so that we can enhance our understanding of the message and an understanding, enhance the understanding of ourselves. So Allah says in Surah Nisa, verse 28, that humans are weak and human being was created weak. The following verse, to offer some insight, right? Because Allah is not going to set us up and be like, hey, you guys are all of these things. Good luck with life, right? We have this the, the remedy within the Quran. And with this verse, it actually follows with the next verse. So again, the verses and the human being was created weak. The following verse says, Oh, those who believed, consume not your wealth between you with falsehood, but that it be a transaction of agreeing together among you and kill not yourselves. So be fair, be forthright, and don't kill each other. Seems easy enough, right? Um, with our impatience, Allah says again in uh, verse, sorry, uh, chapter 70, Verse 19, truly the human being was created fretful. He is fretful when misfortune touches him, but tight-fisted when good fortune comes his way. And so what does Allah continue on to say? Um, so verses 22 to 35 read, but the ones who formally pray, those, they are the ones who continue with their formal prayers. And those who in their wealth, there is a known obligation towards the one who begs and the one is deprived, uh, and those who sincerely validate the day of judgment, and those, they are ones who are apprehensive of the punishment of their Lord. Truly, as to the punishment of their Lord, there is no one who is safe from it. Those, they are ones who guard their private parts, but not from their spouses or from what their right hand possesses. Truly, they are not the ones who will be reproached, but whoever was looking beyond that. Those, they are the ones who turn away. And those, they are who their trust and their compacts are ones who shepherd. And those, they who give their testimony are ones who uphold. And those who, sorry, and those, they who over their formal prayers are watchful. Those will be in gardens, ones who are honored. So what is Allah saying? Oftentimes, it's the simplest solution. Keep your prayers, keep your chastity, keep your trust, keep your word, believe in the day of judgment, and you will be given the gardens. Of course, that always sounds easier, harder to execute. If we just look a little bit further and look at a couple of the other um, traits that Allah mentions, that Allah says that human being was created in haste. 
And Allah says, I will cause you to see my signs. So seek not to hasten, right? Allah is just warning us. If you can look and see and witness the signs of Allah, you will not be in such haste. Unjust and ungrateful. Allah says, and he gave you all that you asked for. And if you were to number the divine blessings of God, you could not count them. So Allah is telling us to be mindful of all that we have, even when it seems like things are not going our way. There are reasons to always be just and always be grateful. Allah created humans to be contentious and quarrelsome. Allah says, and indeed we have employed every kind of parable for mankind in this Quran. And humans are the most contentious of beings. So a little tafsir on this says for the statement that the Quran was contained, has the, the, that the Quran contains every kind of parable for humankind. That is for the moral and religious instructions uh, of human beings. So human beings are contentious, vainly opposing and arguing against the prophets and messengers sent to them. Right. So it, it, this is a tendency that we have is to deny the message and argue. And, and it's not just related to those who were actually given a message directly from a messenger or from a prophet, but we all have this tendency to push back. And then lastly, Allah says that humans lack thought and deliberation. Allah says um, that we offered the trust to the heavens, the earth, and the mountains, yet they refused to undertake it and were afraid of it. Mankind undertook it. They've always been inept and foolish. So that this is so interesting. And I was reading some of the tafsir on this. Some scholars say that the trust was given to like the angels and the jinn, right? And the trust being um, the covenant of, of Tawheed, of, you know, accepting the oneness of God and what that all entails, right? Moral code and laws and whatnot. And they refused it because they knew the burden that that, that, would, that would come with that. But humans took it. Um, and Allah says that we have been inept and foolish. So Allah says that God may, guide, God may punish the hypocritical men and hypocritical women and the idolatrous man and the idolatrous woman and that God may re relent unto the believing men and the believing women. And God is forgiving and merciful. So although God has given us these traits, these flaws, Allah reminds us throughout the Quran that if we truly have belief and we act on that belief, that Allah is forgiving and merciful, that through that we can find, we can find respite in the hereafter and forgiveness. So why am I talking about this? I'm talking about these traits because all of us are leaders we are leaders in some capacity we are leaders in our family relations we're leaders in our friends groups right we can play a role of leader at work in our community some of us are actual leaders in our society um and so when we talk about these flaws we have to to weigh them with the burden of having some sort of leadership. So I wanna go just a little bit further and um, talk about what are the, the factors that can inflate these flaws, right? These negative characteristics that we can hopefully, if we talk about it, if we bring it to light, if we reflect on it, then we can um, reduce it in ourselves. Uh, so we, we can talk about the ego, right? Our ego can over inflate these things. And what happens is when we separate ourselves from others, right? We don't see ourselves as, as a collective of humanity, but rather as individuals. And when we put our own wants and needs above others, right? Um, the other thing is when our ego comes into play is when we minimize others or we boost ourselves or we lack trust in others. Uh, this, again, when you think about relationships and and I don't mean leadership just as someone who's like a, a figurehead. I mean, when you are in any type of relationship, be a partnership with your spouse, your partner, you're both leaders in some regard, right? 
I don't think one is completely, um, you know, uh, ruling the other, but there is, there is, when you have a partnership there, you have to have two leaders, they have to work together. And when you, when you are lacking trust, when you are putting yourself above your partner, um, above your child, above your friends, right? Um, this is where those flaws will, will begin. Those negative flaws will be inflated. So we have ego, we have arrogance. These are two separate things, right? Um, sometimes we, we are arrogant in that we see ourselves as better than others because we look at others and we, we highlight their weaknesses and we don't see it in ourselves. And we, that makes us kind of, that boosts our, our, our sense of self. I like, we talk about people who maybe succumb to certain vices, right? There are people who uh, have a gambling problem or just gamble for fun or drink or cheat or, you know, use certain languages or, or talk down to others. And we look at that and we're like, oh man, like that, those guys are really terrible. That person is not doing, you know, that person is, is doing something horrible. I don't do that. And what we forget is if we are not, if we don't have that weakness to those vices, it's not because we did anything, right? It's not that we're so strong because we are so strong. We are so strong because Allah has allowed us to be strong. And I think that is a humbling um, way to approach how we view ourselves and how we view others is to recognize that when we are doing something good, that's not because we are good. It's because Allah has allowed us to do something good. And the other thing um, that I think can deter us from our, allowing our arrogance to grow is when we view those around us um, as like sort of this is the, the like the, the question I I had I had heard someone say is instead of posing it as why do they do ABC you you say why do people do ABC when you say people you you are automatically including yourself you're recognizing that there are certain habits that all of us can be susceptible to right um, and the last thing I wanted to point out is misinterpreted praise right we're, we're, we've we've become a, a culture that is trying to um, in you know improve and increase the amount of praise that we bestow on others and I, that's always a good thing right it's always good to commend people for doing good for to highlight people that are doing doing well right but again going back to that previous point we can't look at that praise and think to ourselves yeah well I'm really good I'm really good at this you know we have to stop and think I'm good because Allah has made me good and why has Allah made me good at this is it because I'm supposed to use this for something else, right? Uh, I've got wealth because I'm good. I'm really good at my job. I'm really good at saving money or because Allah has put me in a position to save, to earn. And what am I supposed to do with that? So take that and apply it to all these other positive attributes that we have. Or, and, and especially when people highlight it, it's to, it's to remind ourselves like, whoa, take a step back, right? This is something from Allah. And I say these things, and again, I say this almost every time I give a talk, it's really more to remind myself, right? These are things that I try to remind myself that I need to do a better job of reminding myself. Um, and then I thought I would just, you know, share these thoughts with you guys. So I say this saying of mine, I seek forgiveness from all, from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is a forgiver and the merciful. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulullah. In the name of God and exaltations be to Allah and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah, So uh, in the second part, I just want to spend a few minutes um, kind of going over again, maybe how I got to this topic. Um, first it was, you know, maybe I was listening to somebody talk about sins, you know, and how to avoid sins. And a lot of the focus was on those that were committing the sins. And I was thinking about how 
you know, it's easy to look at those that are committing the sins and thinking, oh, they're weak or they're this or they're that and putting, putting that on them and not recognizing that all of us can fall on that path. And that if we are avoiding sins, it's because Allah has prevented it from crossing our paths, right? Um, not because we're something special. Um, and then, you know, the other thing was, so, so that kind of was how it started. And then it, it sort of manifested into the remembrance that humans are vicegerents on earth. Right. And, and again, that role of vicegerent, um, or owner or leader can be filled in various levels with your family, with your friends, with your community work civically, you know, like I'd already mentioned. And then how do we, how do we understand those that role of vicegerent and the strengths and weaknesses and leadership. I mean, how do, how do those all come together? And then you remember that the purpose, our purpose is worship, but it's not just, you know, the individual worship directly to Allah, but it's also how we interact with one another and that legacy that we leave behind, especially for those that we lead, right? And a, a legacy of, of how to worship and you can have an influence. You can be that leader. Like I said, I mean, in every circle, think about it. You're influenced by those that you spend time with, those that you listen to, those that you respect, those that you admire, um, those that are like your subordinates, right? Your children or your friends or whatever, maybe your, hopefully your friends aren't your subordinates, but your employees, your coworkers, whatever it is. And how do you embody how do you embody that, um, those good traits, right? Or how do you diffuse some of those negative flaws that we have? And in order to leave a lasting legacy of, of goodness, um, you know, there's a fine line between, you know, there's a responsibility, right? That you have when you, when you are, are leading by example, you know, you are going to reap the benefits or the punishments of how that, what that outcome is to a certain degree, right? If you, if you, if you are a cheater and you cheat people and others pick up on that because they saw you do it. And it's almost like you gave them this permission to do it. You are going to pay for that. And if you are someone who is generous and giving, and that influences the actions of others, you will be rewarded in that to a certain degree. And that's something to, to remember. Um, and lastly, I just want to close out in terms of leadership, you know, it is a, it is a big responsibility that at times I don't think we fully, um, we can fully quantify how important it is to be a leader. Yeah. I'm going through life. I'm doing my thing, you know, trying to be a good person at that. that you know, what's the big difference? What's the big deal? But it really does it really does um, can have a, a long, larger effect on those around us. Um, but it shouldn't be something that is sought out, you know, irresponsibly. I think a lot of times we see people who are seeking out positions of leadership, positions of power, because it goes back to that arrogance and that ego, right? It inflates it. So what is that end going to end up doing? It's going to inflate those innate flaws that Allah has given us right? To be miserly, to be unjust, to be ungrateful. And so you have to find that balance between accepting that burden and responsibility of, of having some type of leadership and then not seeking it out for your personal, personal gain. Um, and this to me came to light in the last, the last week, you know, I'm sure most of you had heard about, um, the flooding in Libya, you know, poor Libya, has had quite a history post-colonialism of poor leadership um, and internal conflict. And what I saw in the news was, you know, that the, it had this, they had this natural disaster. And what you often hear is the leadership, you know, the, the, they can't get relief because the, the leadership is unorganized. And you sort of look and you go, why were you seeking leadership if you can't protect the people? Isn't that what you should be doing? Leadership should be part and parcel with protecting those who you are in charge of. And 
that is a big, bigger issue. But if you think about it and scale it down, how many of us enter positions of leadership, even on a small scale, and we lack the compassion and mercy for those that we are uh, entrusted to protect. Um, and so just a reminder that sometimes we see things like, oh, those leaders, those warlords, like, you know, they're, 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 their egos are, are out of control and, and that's them and not realizing that all of us can fall into that trap, even on a very small scale. So I apologize for my sort of haphazard talk that kind of went all over the place and taking this way too long than I wanted to. So I will close out here with just some duras. Oh Allah, please accept our good deeds and our good intentions, forgive our shortcomings and missteps, and allow us to experience many more moments together. O oh Allah, grant us the good things in this world and the good things in the next life and save us from the punishment of the fire. O oh Allah, aid us in accepting the tests and tribulations of this life and give us the strength to overcome any challenges we may face. O oh Allah, we ask that you place solace and peace in the hearts of those suffering any injustices. O oh Allah, we hope for your mercy. Do not leave us to ourselves, even for the blinking of an eye. Correct each of our affairs for us. There is none worthy of worship but you. And if I have said anything of truth, that is from Allah alone, and my gratitude goes to Allah. And if I have said anything that was not in truth, then that was from my own ego, and I ask for forgiveness for that transgression.